Our next presenter, and I'm going to inverse it, he told me his favorite athletes of all time were Bill Russell, <coughs> Celtics champion, and uh, one of my all-time favorite athletes, Bo Jackson. So we shared um, Bo Jackson's story back, back, backstage. Um, but Joel Dawson is the CTO and co-founder of ETA Devices. It's a fa fabulous semiconductor company in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's a spin-out of Joel's uh, research as an associate professor of electrical engineering and computer science at MIT, another MIT, where he remained until 2012. During that time, he received the National Science Foundation Career Award in 2008 and the Presidential Early Career Award for Scientists and Engineers in 2009. His research led to his, re to, to his resident award-winning work in mobile power architecture, which drastically reduces the energy inefficiencies of radio communications. He received his degrees in electrical engineering and computer science from MIT. After, his, after earning his PhD in electrical engineering from Stanford, he co-founded Aspendos Communications, another fabulous semiconductor company acquired by Bicene Communications. So ladies and gentlemen, Joel Dawson. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you very much for uh, having me and thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm just going to pull up the slides. I do not see them. I think it's a PDF file. Um, so, you know, while we're uh, sorting out the, the kind of media issues, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, as, um, as in the introduction, you know, what, what my work centers on is uh, wireless communications. And, uh, you know, why is that even interesting? And I think it's, it's useful, you know, especially for someone who's kind of down in the weeds, you know, in, in the, the technical details, to take a t step back and remind ourselves why that is interesting. So, all of you have the experience of taking a little device in your hands, putting it in your ear, and calling Korea, or Morocco, or California. And that doesn't involve any physical effort on your part. You don't have to take the phone and hurl it, and as far as it goes, that, that limits you know, how, uh, how long you can talk. Actually, it's very easy. And you know, why do you know, it, what, how has that been explained to you? How do you know you can do this? Well, as someone says, well, these electromagnetic waves come boiling out of the phone that you cannot see, or hear, or smell, or touch. It feels better to call it electromagnetic waves than magic because you sound smarter. But that's amazing. So for me, uh, you know, I started really uh, you know, being interested in, in radio uh, when I was in grade school, and I really kind of never lost that interest. And uh, the, uh, the work that we do at Ada Devices uh, actually intersects a problem or something that you all experience again every day. How many people have noticed uh, that when you're doing a FaceTime call or Skype or, or you know, working on YouTube that your phone gets hot? Everybody. You've also probably noticed that you know, when you, you're using a, 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 a high data rate application, the battery goes down quickly. Okay. That is actually your clue that despite the bright display you know, being right in your face, it's actually not the thing that's consuming most of the power in your phone. It's actually the wireless link that's doing it. And it does that for very interesting reasons. And I, we, we'll, we'll see, um, you know, if you look at the, uh, if, the uh, if we could kind of bring up the slides. If you look at, you know, one, once cell phones you know, became you know, widely available and then Steve Jobs came in and swept us all off our feet with the iPhone, one of the things that you notice is that you know, as, you, uh, as your, your capability of surfing the web and doing all these amazing things you know, went up, your battery life went down. And that's kind of a non-intuitive thing. We're used to technology getting better, and instead it appears to have gotten worse. Now in this case, the technology is getting better, I have to admit. Uh, you know, it, you know, surfing the web, having a video conference call, that used to be you know, science fiction. And now, again, we can do that without having to have a workstation you know, go crazy. But there's a cost. It turns out that, you know, again, when you send you know, radio waves you know, out, you know, uh, out through the air, those radio waves are a form of energy. That energy has to come from somewhere, and it comes from the battery. Furthermore, uh, when you draw energy from the battery, not all of that goes out in, in terms of, as radio waves. That is to say, 
the electronics are not very efficient. So uh, to give you an idea, when you fire up your Wi-Fi connection, what we would say for a Wi-Fi is that those transmitters tend to be something like 10% efficient. So what that means is that you know, for every you know, uh, 100 milliwatts that you draw of your battery, you are, uh, every 100 milliwatts that you send out over the air, you're drawing a watt of energy from the battery. So 10 times, you know, uh, 10 times the energy that you actually need to communicate is uh, you know, being brought out of the battery. That is the issue that I wanted to address in my research at MIT and that ultimately led me here to be the, uh, a, a co-founder and chief technology officer of Aided Devices. Now, with wireless communications, uh, this, uh, this idea of you know, con consuming more energy than you need has a couple of important consequences. You know, we were talking a little bit about you know, how that drains your battery life, and that's absolutely true. Uh, you know, again, another experiment you can do for yourself, if you, if you download a movie to your phone you know, before you get on the plane, you, know, you can watch that movie you know, on a transatlantic flight, and you'll have plenty of battery life le left. It's, a, it's that wireless connection that really you know, drives you crazy. Uh, another example of this, <coughs> is that when you're using kind of these GPS services, you know, again, you're, you, you're really active, you're really working that wireless connection, you're drawing the battery down. Um, and this is uh, not just some, you know, electronic engineering geek problem to kind of think about. It turns out that the greatest geek of them all, Steve Jobs, knew about this problem. And we, we, found, out about, we found out about this when we were uh, trying to raise money, you know, with a venture capitalist. And, um, you know, the, uh, the venture capitalist in this case, he was a very scientific-minded guy. You know, he had founded Sun Microsystems, you know, it was just amazing. Uh, and he sits back and, you know, well, you know, guys, I, uh, I was talking to Steve the other day. <laughs> Steve, wow, who's, well, he's, uh, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, you know, very well-connected. Oh, wow, Steve Jobs. And Steve said, you know, hey, man, you know, you've, you've got to solve this problem with, you know, the power amplifier. I'm like, why would a guy like Steve, I mean, he's as disconnected, you know, Steve Wozniak is the guy that's kind of go, goes into the technical details. You know, why would he do that? Well, what does Steve Jobs love? Steve Jobs loves to design elegant, smooth products with an apple on the top that has a bite out of it, okay, that what you see in the middle. But in order to develop something that's really polished and really small, he's actually inhibited because this Wi-Fi connection Rather than sending all of its energy out as useful electromagnetic radiation, it's boiling a lot of stuff out as heat. And when you, have, when you release a lot of heat in a small area, if you don't do something proactive, it will overheat and melt. So if you open up a wireless router, this is an 802.11ac you know, wireless router. Uh, you know, if you don't know the acronyms, what that means is when you're really, uh, you know, your, your broadest band wireless router that you can you know, have in your house and you open it up, those black things with fins are for managing heat. So Steve Jobs is unable to shrink this down as much as he would like because this obnoxious, archaic component called an RF power amplifier can't do its job efficiently. Now, I, uh, the, the really interesting for me as, as, a, as a researcher before I kind of entered the, uh, the startup world, the interesting thing to me was, okay, how, how did this happen? Well, uh, you know, we, we started to be aware of it because of this uh, explosion in wireless connectivity. You know, Wi-Fi is everywhere. You know, if you have an, an iPad and you elect not to have sort of cellular coverage, you still find they can use it almost anywhere, right? Wi-Fi is everywhere. And, uh, uh, that trend is, uh, you know, is just continuing. And it, it happens because of these amazing devices and also because of this amazing ecosystem that's developing everywhere. You, know, you have the, the, the big macro cell towers uh, that allow you to use your cell phone almost everywhere. There are wireless routers all over campus. You know, it, it's, just, it's, it's, it's everywhere. Um, the interesting research problem is, you know, we kind of know why this happens. You know, as you ask for uh, the ability to send more bits per second, uh, so there's sort of a broader band connection. Uh, it turns out that that requires more energy. And the real question is, is that a fundamental trade-off? Does nature demand that for a broader band connection you have to consume more energy? Or have we just not been clever enough as engineers? No one really knew. We kind of knew this trade-off. We didn't know if that was a fundamental law, if that's just how it would be. 
Uh, so when I was at MIT uh, and I was working, uh, you know, uh, collaborating with a, uh, a professor there named David Peralt, you know, who has sort of a, a complementary, uh, you know, research set, we got together to kind of work on this problem. And uh, what we found is that um, I don't know that there's a way I, that I can say today that, that you can completely break the trade-off, but you can certainly soften the trade-off you know, to a degree that we never thought possible. You know, what, what I mean by that is that what we found is that uh, if you are, you know, take advantage of you know, certain technological trends that have really come into maturity in the last five to ten years, what you find is you can reduce the power consumption in your wireless link by as much as 30 percent. That's a big deal. And uh, again, to kind of put that in perspective, uh, if we are watching Usain Bolt run the 100 meter dash in roughly 10 seconds, I mean, he could do it in less, but in roughly 10 seconds, okay. Uh, and he lowers that record by a hundredth of a second, we go nuts, okay. So a hundredth of a second, you know, out of 10 seconds, that's kind of, you know, 0.01%. 30% is lowering the 100 meter dash record from 10 seconds to seven seconds. You know, completely redefines what we think is possible, you know, on a problem that a lot of people have been looking at for a long time. Uh, so, you know, when we, when, we, when we found that, you know, in kind of our initial prototype, we saw, saw that, that kind of potential. Uh, we said, okay, you know, we've got to, we've got to uh, start a company and, uh, you know, kind of bring this out there. Uh, because actually, uh, in our area, in our field, you know, that's the way you change an industry and kind of make things happen. So that, that's what we're trying to do. So, you know, the rest of uh, uh, the, the last couple of slides here are just, you know, kind of giving you an idea of, you know, what's going on in your phone and what, what kind of things are we introducing to, to, to make this happen. Well, uh, when we say a fabulous semiconductor company, what we mean is uh, we design microchips. And, uh, you know, microchips, uh, you know, uh, once we design the microchips, they are fabricated overseas. And the idea for us is that they would be you know, in your iPhone or your Samsung Galaxy or something like that. If you were to open up your iPhone or your Samsung Galaxy, what you would find is, you know, hundreds of different parts from, you know, from, you know all sorts of different vendors. Uh, you, know, the, uh, you know, the apps processor, you know, all sorts of microprocessors, all sorts of different sensors, uh, you know, the, the power amplifiers, filters. I mean, it, it is, it is a, a, an engineering marvel in itself. We were trying to get, you know, one of our pieces into that. Uh, for those of you who have been kind of early adopters, you know, in this wireless craze. Uh, you may recall that the early cell phones actually lasted a lot longer than cell phones do today. That is because uh, their wireless connectivity was much more narrow band, it wasn't as fast. Uh, we used to, you, might, you might have heard these acronyms like the old GSM phones. You know, GSM happens to be a very energy friendly standard, uh, you know, if, if we were really on the Big Bang Theory and I, I had a laugh track, you know, I would say something like, it, it's the PA designer's dream. So I kind of have a laugh track, but not a, not a strong one, right? Now, there we go, there we go, all right. Uh, but as things have evolved, you know, uh, basically what has happened is that we, we, we value, you know, kind of our connectivity and our capability and our features more than we do energy consumption. So, you know, it, uh, it, we launched the string of acronyms. You have heard most of these things before, and nothing else in kind of the wireless commercials, but you know, GSM, WCDMA, LTE, you know, multi-band, multi-mode phones, you know, um, CMOS you probably haven't heard of, but uh, you know, 802.11ac, the latest you know, Wi-Fi standard. And in all of those cases, what we have found, or what we have accepted as consumers and as an industry, is that you know, the really broadband, lightning-fast connection is more important to us than uh, power consumption, and so we've just sort of dealt with the heat. Our innovation, our technology, and the microchips that we uh, produce are designed to go into your phone, go into your wireless router, uh, go into a macro base station. And the idea is that we will take, uh, you know, every one of these PAs, our power amplifiers or ra you know, radio transmitters, and make them more efficient, lower their power consumption by 30%. Um, and uh, our ambition and our vision is that you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, this is just the way you would design high performance radio transmitters. You know, it would, be, it would just become such, a, such an accepted technique. You know, uh, undergraduates would sort of, you know, finish electrical engineering programs wondering how else would anyone ever design, 
uh, transmitter. That's what we're really trying to do. Uh, that's the kind of impact that we were trying to have. We also, of course, are trying to make a lot of money. So, thank you very much for your attention. You've been very kind. All right. The first obvious question. Yes. You worked radio communications? Yeah. But you have the voice for radio. Did you ever do like radio, uh, radio? Like DJ Dawson or something like uh, that? No, no, no DJ Dawson. No? Although, you know, no but I, I, I did once do the uh, voiceover for a friend's video game called Laser Chess. Yeah, but don't you agree he would be good for radio, like behind the mic? That's the that first thing. All right. Um, with all this, where do you, I'm going to do a little back to the future with you, right? Yeah. You saw the, how they uh, try to predict 30 years ahead yeah, and yeah, all that yeah, they were doing. Yeah. Where do you see the future of, of this phone and this wireless ecosystem that you've talked about? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think that the future, you know, really, um, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, right now, to give you an idea, you know, with Wi-Fi connections, you know, we, we talk about that as having 160 megahertz of bandwidth. And it's not particularly important to know exactly what that means. Uh, but it, what is important is to know that a, as a few years ago, uh, people thought 5 megahertz bandwidth, you know, that's just too much. What are you going to ever do with that? And you know, bandwidth has to do with how fast your connection is and what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of applications you, know, you, can, you can do. So uh, our hunger for bandwidth seems to be insatiable. Mm -hmm. you know, we're finding more and more ways to do it. A lot of what drives the wireless industries is ways to deliver more content faster to you, you know, either through technology like this, you know, sort of you know, more base station. So you know, video conferencing is just a start. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and uh, the only other thing that's reliable is we, we, it's always a surprise how that bandwidth gets used, you know, when you're going forward. Mm -hmm. Would you say that technology is changing faster than ever before in the history of mankind? You know, in some ways, yes. I, I think, uh, uh, for the most part, I think actually progress, technical progress, is, is pretty normal, uh, ex with one important exception. Uh, you know, have, have people heard of something called Moore's Law? So Moore's law is, uh, is the uh, kind of this, this law that says that you know, every two years or every 18 months, uh, the size and uh, capability of our microchips will double. And that law has been going on for 30 years. Now again, you've probably heard that, uh, what does that really mean? Well, let's put it in financial terms. Suppose that you had an investment that doubled every 18 months for 30 years. Crazy, crazy, and I, I am not. I, I cannot think of another technology that has had that kind of scaling, you know, for that long. And that's what's that's what the electronics industry is benefiting from. So that that I believe is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. And where's most of this research taking place? Private sector or the public? Most of it is going on within companies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there's a uh, uh, there, there's been a lot of research, you know, within uh, you know the electrical engineering departments of research universities as well. You know, but the uh, uh, largely because there's so much money involved, mm -hmm. you know, companies have been uh, mm -hmm. driving it. All right, thank you. All Good right. job. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.